Hello and welcome to this third video in the series on Groove Agent SE5. So again this is a series looking at using it as a drum sample player rather than just loading up presets and editing them. And in this video we're going to take a look at the sample editor. So if you're not sure what to do look at the previous couple of videos in the series. But we're going to move into the sample editor. So I've loaded up uh, an 808 long kick sample as you can hear there. And now we're going to look at the sample editor, which is the fifth tab along here. Now, got some useful controls in here. Firstly is the A actually for the zoom, which zooms between full and whatever level you were last zoomed at, which can be quite nice for flicking in and out. Uh, we've got a few handles here. So firstly, the set sample start, so we can pick where the sample is going to start. So if I play that, you can see and here that we're missing out on the large part of it, which can be quite useful if you have a snare drum sample, etc. that you want to take maybe the crack out of the beginning. So let's just look at this snare here. And let's say you wanted it to start a bit later without that tone initially. And there you go. You can do that quickly and easily with this. I'm going to move back to the kick drum sample. We've got some other section here. Now this is velocity start range. So what this means is as you play a lower velocity, so here I'm playing a really low velocity on the kit. I'm just going to do it on the pad so you can see it on screen. You can see we start later. So that means you can take off that attack, which often is at the beginning of drum samples. Whereas if we play high velocity, we go from the very beginning and it will progressively start later which is a good way, again, on top of volume, because obviously it's changing volume, but also it's often changing in tone. So the initial attack of a note will be where the high frequencies, etc., are. And that will allow you to cut that out just using velocity rather than spending a lot of time playing around with uh, other sections, which could do the same kind of thing, but this is a quick way to achieve that. We've got different sample modes. It's a little hidden, maybe, but it's normally in one-shot mode. So you click on that. We've got these different modes here. So we've got continuous, which is a looping mode, and you can see these extra handles appear. So we've got the loop start and loop finish. We're going to look at that in a minute and look at how you can create something using looping and envelopes. Uh, these modes are the same as sample, the sampler track in Cubase as well. So until release, uh, alternate and alternate till release. So let's just see if we can get that. So you can see that one goes backwards and forwards. And then alternate till release does a similar thing and then goes forwards once you've released it. So we're going to look at the continuous mode and zoom in. So what we're going to do is create one of those uh, boom kind of kicks which goes down and then changes pitch as we go. And you can do it all in here. First thing here, I'm going to snap, set snap to zero crossing. So now you can see that will only move on a positive zero crossing there for the loop marker, which means we get a nice loop. So there, we've just got that set to play that so it's playing the initial part and then holding that now that might be what you're after some weird sustained kick drum but what i'm looking for is a long boom which is going to go down and change in volume as well so to do that we're going to call on the uh, pitch and amp uh, envelopes. So I'm going to use the pitch one here. Now at the moment it's only a small fraction of a second and when we play it, it moves pretty much straight to that because uh, within 0.3 of a second we're at this kind of whole point. So what we're going to do is make it into one shot mode and in one shot mode it will move through the entire envelope no matter how long you do it for. And then this is the end point. Now I'm going to move that end point down and also to the right. And you can keep doing it like this, or we can just type a time in. So I'm going to say 4,000 milliseconds. And then you can see it. So that's going all the way down to there. And then make the envelope. 
I'm gonna make it a bit more severe. So that's kind of what I'm looking for there. Maybe a bit more, and maybe it could happen a bit earlier. And now I want to do a similar thing with the volume. So the volume's going to fade out so we don't hear these very last bits where it's dropping almost out of audio uh, listening range. So again, the amplifier here, that last one there, I'm going to set that to 4000. And then view the whole thing. Now, because we're in sustain mode, we're not getting that played. So we're going to change to one shot mode. And now we're going to make use of curves, which are available here. So with that there, I'm going to just change that curve. So it's a little bit more, well, let's try it linear first, one zero ish. And if we wanted it to just drop off a bit more at the end. So there we go. With it, just a few edits, you can make something from a fairly mundane uh, kick sample something more interesting now where I click it multiple times you can see we have what I would consider a problem here and we can fix that fairly easily so back in the main section we can change it so the poly is one so it will only play one at a time so if I re-trigger it it will re-trigger and won't be playing two at the same time and there we go so that's a look at the sample editor in Groove Agent SE5 and how you can use it to create loops and then use the envelopes to create more interesting sounds as you go. So that's one use of the sample editor. Now we're gonna look at something else which was promised before. So on the snare here, now the most important part of this really, this is, this is all fairly you know straightforward sample editor stuff, but audio warp can be really useful. So if I play the snare here, if we turn audio warp on, I'm putting on solo, because it's a monophonic sound. We can use the speed and formant controls to control, as it says, the speed here. And we can go down to get some interesting uh, sample and hold kind of effects here. And the formant control, let's put that back to 100. Oh, 100 even. There you go and the formant control allows you to shift the formants in the sound so you can hear it's staying at the same kind of pitch but those formants are changing now obviously depending on the sample that you're using you get different results but here we can really change the character of that sound without necessarily changing the pitch so it doesn't work in the same way if we change the pitch so going back to the main section It doesn't work like that. It's much more musical. And sometimes you get, say, you can get some real low end coming out of that there. You can also sync it to tempo. So we can see here, you know, if your original sample had a particular BPM, which th this doesn't, then you can change it and you can change it to beats as well. So pick how many beats it would be and this, that, and the other. So this section for me is probably the most interesting. Uh, section in the same way it is in the sampler track so this being able to audio warp a sample as you play it is a useful creative uh, tool and much more much more useful and interesting than just changing the pitch with the coarse and fine tune which you can do so that's a look through the features of the sample editor in Groove Agent SE5 I hope you found this video useful if you have please uh, like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you soon.